hi welcome to the part 4 we will look at some more questions today if you have not subscribed please subscribe so in this requirement it is very straightforward okay if you read the question it takes some time it is poorly drafted they have two clusters one is the redshift cluster this does not belong to sales team and then sales team has their own bi cluster okay sales team is saying hey guys can you give me access to this one so that i can join these two and create my bi reports so what is your business problem your problem is you have to share this redshift cluster data with sales team and the way it should happen is the blue stuff should not get overloaded option d is a very long shot they are saying from this yellow and blue so if there's some blue box you put the data in this red one which is s3 and then use redshift cluster uh, redshift spectrum see spectrum it allows redshift to access s3 data see you cannot always migrate flat files to redshift so this is one approach you keep your data in flat files access it using spectrum this solution will minimize usage of resources on etl cluster because uh, every time yellow box fires query it goes to s3 but every time you will extract the data from blue box and put in the red box because uh, blue box every day it is getting lots of records so this process will be on and this can interrupt your critical analysis that's why this is not good or uh, c says i'll create database views see views are logical entities ultimately the pressure will go to the tables and then you give sales team direct access so what if somebody is an idiot there they keep on firing queries so blue box becomes overloaded then question is saying i want to minimize usage so of the computing resources so this guys will not minimize and b is saying okay view is a logical entity but mentalized view is not a logical entity mentalized view it holds data also views does not hold data views are logical entity that means it will physically hit the tables but mentalized view will not physically hit the tables during curing it stores the data also so this guy is saying guys let's create a mentalized view so mentalized view the mentalized view has an advantage it will pre-compute and it can cache query results so metalized view use when you want high performance don't use for data sharing similarly views these are virtual representation of data so if you want to simplify complex queries then you use it okay it does not help with performance that's why we told it will have minimal performance impact but uh, it is a logical stuff so there is no storage cost so view is only to help people understand the sql queries better you know those big complex sql queries if you want to give that a structure and hide data complexity then you use views so metalized view will also not be good here metalized view is for improving performance Views is for reducing C complexity. Okay. So A is our answer because only one option is left. So you, you have to use Redshift data sharing. So there is a feature provided. You give live data access in data sharing. And with whom can you share? You can share anybody within 
your organizations across aws accounts across regions you may be in india but your users may be in us you can do that you can do that with third party providers like people who don't work for your company you can do that also if, you know you might say oh, what is the advantage guys why should i use this like materialized view i know for performance we should use see for data sharing you should always use this redshift data sharing capabilities because redshift manages internal compute and etc on its own it's a managed service first thing is you are not doing data movement because data movement is the most expensive operation and it uses compute it uses storage you duplicate the data so you pay for storage also plus this gives you real time insights whatever is there in blue box yellow box can access it immediately and this reduces cost of like i told storage there is no cost okay plus maintenance also no maintenance like traditional data sharing methods so this guy takes care of automatically see you can share data this is a documentation for redshift sharing okay you can pause this and read so option a is our final answer redshift data sharing see there is a company they store everything in s3 standard storage class now for six months and the files are frequently accessed between six to two years the files are accessed once or twice a month after two years it is accessed only once or twice a year each year very very few times so they are saying because i have plugged life cycle policy i want high availability give me the most cost effective way so for each of these three time periods what should we do option a says hey guys let's transition to one zone frequent access see one zone frequent access will never give you high availability we are wanting high availability one zone it only stores data in one availability zone if that crashes or the data center has some problems your data is lost that is not high availability that is why we will strike this out anything to do with one zone is wrong now we have two options uh, which one is correct so both are using standard ia the infrequent access will be better because after six months it is only using for once or twice each month so infrequent access is good okay but uh, after that where should you go should you go to deep archive or should you go to uh, like uh, glacier flexible so flexible retrieval means you can retrieve the data very fast the question is saying i want high availability that means data should be available if data center crashes still data should be available <clears throat> it does not mean data should be retrieved faster it does not mean that so we have to very clearly distinguish our decision making factor is cost cost is a decision making factor flexible retrieval is uh, relatively costly than glacier deep dive so we will mark this wrong in this context so option c would be the right answer uh, let us look at this next question see you have uh, what you are currently doing in this case is you have a database and you have s3 you are using blue to move data from here to here that means to move the data from blue box to green box you are using blue question is saying boss boss listen give me something to orchestrate automatically i don't want to run one etl job and then other etl job and i don't want to do that manually give me something to orchestrate i want least operational overhead i don't want people to be sitting and running jobs after jobs or waiting for the jobs to finish to pick the other job i don't want that give me something see we should first understand what are the different options now all of these options will help you with orchestrating but which one will work here blue workflows if we are talking only about blue jobs then you can use this you can go through the strengths and limitations here but it is all about glue clawers jobs and so on but in this question glue is not the only hero and there is also emr which is a hero so there are different services and there is also s3 being used but emr is also used for processing the data so if there are two heroes glue and emr if there are two heroes i cannot just use glue workflows because glue workflow works only for glue it will not work for emr 
lambda functions lambda functions the problem with lambda is it dies after 15 minutes what if the data processing takes more than 15 minutes in this example it will not work now what about manage workflows this one is very uh, it is taking maximum operational overhead why because it is very good it gives you a lot of control but the operational overhead is high because you have to maintain an additional airflow environment first second is uh, you have to set up the security access controls monitoring and so on so you can leverage air if you have airflow expertise in the team in the real life what you would do if you have airflow expertise in the team very strong uh, then you use it you already have airflow setup and etc then you can use it but in this case in this example this will have higher operational overhead now in our case step functions will work good because step functions it is meant for orchestration orchestration of what only glue jobs no no bus it can do lambda functions it can do emr jobs it can do glue jobs any anything all aws service calls it can do it will give you fine grained control if you get error you can handle error you can handle branches and so on perfect for our job so just we have established option b step functions is the right answer in this case because it will give you the least operational overhead glue workflow will not work because it, there is a problem with feasibility because it cannot handle emr processing and lambda functions auto kills after 15 minutes and apache airflow will have maximum operational workloads or overhead if you have not yet subscribed please do so and this brings us to the end of part 4 see you in the next part